do benzylic and allylic halides undergo E2 elimination reactions? The answer is yes. Benzylic and allylic halides, they readily undergo E2 elimination reactions because the new double bond that is formed in the product is going to make the compound more stable because the newly formed double bond is conjugated with either the benzene ring or with the already existing double bond. So let's take a look into this first reaction. This is our alpha carbon and these are our beta carbons. And we also have one more beta carbon, but this beta carbon doesn't have any hydrogen. So if we needed to pull the hydrogen, probably it should be from any one of these carbons. So to find out which one is the stable product, we are going to pull the hydrogen from the carbon which has the least number of hydrogens, which is going to give us this product. And as you can see from here, there are the newly formed double bond is in conjugation with the already existing double bond in the benzene ring. Therefore, this product right here is going to be more stable. Likewise, the allylic halides can also undergo uh, E2 elimination reactions. For this reaction, here is the product that is formed, where you can see that these two double bonds are in conjugation with respect to each other, and therefore this is a stable product. Do benzylic halides and allylic halides, can they undergo E1 elimination reactions? They can also undergo E1 elimination and reaction because they are able to form stable carbocations. So once this leaving group leaves, it's going to form a benzylic carbocation. Here in this case, it's going to form a tertiary benzylic carbocation. And once that carbocation is formed, we can abstract the beta hydrogen. So here you can see that this is our alpha carbon. Here are our two beta carbons. Abstracting any one of these hydrogens should give us the products, but we have to remove the hydrogen from the carbon which has the fewest number of hydrogens. And therefore, we are going to remove from here. Similarly, allylic halides can also undergo E1 elimination reaction. This is our alpha carbon, and we cannot pull an hydrogen from this carbon because pulling the hydrogen from this carbon is going to create us an allene which is relatively unstable. So we are going to pull the hydrogen from this carbon to form our product. So to begin with, we will be having the allyl carbocation. Once that allyl carbocation is formed, the beta hydrogen will be abstracted from here and it is going to lead to the formation of the product. In some cases where the allylic halides can form uh, two different carbocations through resonance, it can lead to two different uh, types of products. Here is one such example. So to begin with, the leaving group is going to leave and it's going to create as a carbocation. And once this carbocation is formed, it's going to be resonance stabilized. to form another carbocation. Here in this case, you have a secondary allylic carbocation. But here, this is going to be a tertiary allylic carbocation. And each one of this is going to react with a base to give the diene. For this molecule, this is our alpha carbon. And in here, there are two hydrogens here. One of these hydrogens will be abstracted with a base and uh, it is going to lead to the diene where the base comes and abstracts this hydrogen and thrusts these electrons onto to form a double bond. And when we look into this one, this is our alpha carbon. And these are our two hydrogens. One of these hydrogens will be abstracted by a base and it's going to lead to the formation of the diene. And you can see both of these products are different.